Hello everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. I'm excited to be bringing you some inspiration that I created with the new Simon Says Stamp Holiday 2022 Limited Edition Card Kit. Now this kit is filled with so many beautiful holiday products and I ended up making a total of six different pieces. One is a mixed media project, three are tags, and two are cards. And I'm going to show you a little bit of all the different things that I made with the kit contents to create all the pieces that I did create with this kit. It's a very inspiring kit. You can make so many different things with the contents. So why don't I jump on in and I'll show you what I created. I want to first start with the mixed media piece because honestly this is the one I was most excited about because I really loved how it turned out. So I covered an etc. tag from Tim Holtz. This is the smallest of his etc. tags. I covered it with pattern paper from the kit using redline tape. Redline tape is one of my favorite things to use for mixed media projects because you don't have to wait for anything to dry. This tape is perfect for holding onto basically anything. And the fact that you don't have to wait for anything to dry saves you so much time. So honestly, for a mixed media piece, this came together very quickly because I utilized the red line tape so often. So like I said, I covered the tag with the pattern paper, but then I pulled out this tree mask stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and I picked out the stencil that I thought best was proportionate to my project. I'm going to then trace the stencil with a pencil so that I have that tree drawn onto some chipboard. This is chipboard from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to use my scissors to trim out that traced tree. And then once I have this cut out, I can then use this as a template for creating a dimensional tree that's going to go onto my tag. So I know that probably sounds complicated, but it was really quite simple. I'm going to cover this chipboard tag a little bit at a time with hot glue and then the pine twine that's included in the kit. So what I did was I wrapped this entire chipboard triangle with pine twine, and it really didn't take that much pine twine to do it, but I wrapped this up so that way I could have this really cool tree shape made from the twine. And so now this really literally looks like a Christmas tree because it's got that pine element to it, so cool. So that created a really neat tree and then I made a trunk from a half of a clothespin. So I just took a clothespin apart and used one half of it to create the trunk. Hot glue is your best friend for a project like this. Between the red line tape and hot glue, you don't have to wait for anything to dry. I used buttons to decorate my tree, but you could have used sequins or other embellishments. I just thought the buttons were fun and unique and I had them in my stash, so I thought I would pull them out and use them on this project. I utilized some of the Christmas ephemera that was in the kit to decorate my tag. So like I said, this was a small etc. tag from Tim Holtz and I covered it with the pattern paper, but then the ephemera is creating some of these extra layers and the colors match so well with the pattern paper that all of this works so seamlessly together. I did bring in some white picket fence distress paint and a dry paintbrush to create some dry brush paint strokes around the edges of the tag. Then I also used a clear block to create some splatters on top of the pattern paper to really accent that distressed feel. With some hot glue, I'm just going to glue my entire little Christmas tree here right into the middle of my tag, smack dab amongst all of the pattern paper and the ephemera pieces. This looks really, really cool. So hot glue held that in place and then I just added a bit of ribbon along the top I did use some foundry wax to cover the hole reinforcer that's included with this etc. tag. The foundry wax adds that nice gold metallic finish. So here's our tag mostly done, but then I decided to throw in a little bit of snowy accents with some glossy accents and mica flakes. So I just covered my tree with glossy accents and then sprinkled the mica flakes on top. That created the perfect snow effect on this tree. I know you probably didn't necessarily need it, but I like to add a little sparkle whenever possible, and I really liked how this finished off the tree. Topper, of course, was a star, and I pulled out this mirrored stars from Tim Holtz. 
that really looked nice on top of this tree. It wasn't too shiny and it wasn't distracting from the rest of the whole entire mixed media project. So I thought that this was a perfect embellishment to complete my tag. All right, so we're already done through project one. I hope you're ready to jump into project number two because this one's a card. I was really honored to have been able to illustrate the stamp set that's included in this kit. And I also designed the two sentiment dies. So the stamp set is the Festive Feathered Friends stamp set and it features a wide range of birds that were all inspired by the 12 days of Christmas. Well, one of the birds in particular was the swan and I designed this so that way you could stamp the swan and color it with markers and whatnot, give it some shading. But then I thought also too, I wanted to be able to have the snowy elements able to be stamped in something completely different. So that way you're not stuck stamping it in the same color as what you stamped the actual bird. So because these are two separate pieces, they line up perfectly, that allows you to go ahead and emboss those snowflakes with whatever embossing powder you want. Now I chose gold for my card, but you could have used silver, you could have used white, even a sparkle embossing powder would have looked really pretty. You've got a lot of options with that, and so that's why I wanted to make sure I showed you a project using this particular stamp because I really was excited at how this turned out. So because I had the option of being able to stamp the snowflakes and the swan separately, I can now color my outlined bird with some Copic markers. I just used a gray marker and some blue to add a little bit of shading to those pieces. I'll cut that out. And then I also cut out one of the sentiments that I designed. This one's the Fancy Tidings of Cheer. And I cut it from the red holographic cardstock that's included in the kit. My plan is to pair this red holographic cardstock sentiment with the beautiful holly leaf pattern paper that's also part of the kit. Now I do want to make sure I stack the sentiment. I always like the look of this. I feel like it accentuates the greeting and also gives it a much more custom feel by having a little bit of dimension to it. So I always like to stack a greeting whenever possible. I just used one layer of white cardstock underneath the holographic red, and then I stacked everything right on top of the shadow layer that's also part of that entire die set. Using the thin 3D foam squares that are included in the kit, I stacked the swan on top of my pattern paper, and then I used some actual foam tape so it's a little bit thicker than the thin 3D foam squares. I used that to stack the greeting on top of the swan. So we have some slight differences in the dimension and that adds a lot of nice depth to the finished card. This entire piece is getting popped up onto a white A2 card base. I used foam tape for that and then I traced over parts of the swan with some glossy accents. That's going to give me a clear adhesive to sprinkle some clear rock candy on top of the swan. This will provide just a tiny bit of sparkle to certain areas of the swan and add to that frosty finish that this card provides. All right, so we have one card down, and now I wanna show you the second card I made. This one's a shaker. I was so inspired by these pattern papers, not only when I designed the stamp set, but also when I was creating with this kit. The 12 Days of Christmas theme is very strong throughout this kit, and I really, really liked that. It's very unique, not something you often see in a kit. And so I, what I did was I die cut the pattern paper from the kit with the nested arch dies from Simon's the Stamp. And then I also die cut the partridge die, part of the kit, from that nested arch. I also die cut it from the holographic red cardstock that's included in the kit. So what I'm planning on doing is putting a clear piece of acetate on the back side of my patterned paper. So that way then I can nest that beautiful red partridge die right on top of that negative space and it's got a place to sit. I did want to put a bit of stenciling behind that partridge, so I masked off certain areas of my card so that way I didn't get ink anywhere. I didn't want it to actually be showing. So this is masking off just the inner portion of my card, basically where the partridge die has that window. I did put a little bit of texture onto my ink blending by using this Christmas star stencil and just basically blending a very light tone on tone design onto the stenciling and I used Fawn ink from Simon's to Stamp to do all that. I removed the tape that was masking off my card and that gives me a nice clean edge around the outside edges of my panel. I'm putting a few clear sequins and gems inside of my shaker. I used two layers of foam tape to create the shaker pocket 
and then that nests right on top of my card base, sandwiching those sequins inside, and now we have this sparkly little shaker behind our partridge. I did use the Festive Feather Friends stamp set to go ahead and stamp a sentiment onto black cardstock. I'll use antique gold embossing powder from Simon's Stamp to heat emboss my sentiment, and then I'm going to use my fine tip scissors to fussy cut the greeting out. These fine tip scissors are from Simon's Stamp and are really, really fantastic for fussy cutting. They have a super sharp point and small blades, so it really gets into all those tight corners. For a little bit extra embellishment, I did put a few of those clear sequins outside of the shaker. That always kind of ties everything together and I really like the sparkle that it adds. And you'll also notice I put a small gold insert inside of the pair of that partridge die. Just a little extra something special that provides just that perfect finishing touch to this card. All right, we're gonna wrap things up with a few tags. I really, really love how these tags turned out. So one of the things that's included in the kit is the shrink sheets from Simon's Stamp. These are so much fun because you can take any die cut or any stamped image and turn it into a miniature of what it once was. So I'm gonna stamp the partridge stamp from the Festive Feather Friends stamp set onto these shrink sheets with stays on ink. I'm using white, but you can use any color of stays on ink. Stays on ink is just the best ink to use for this technique because it's a solvent so it will dry well and also stay opaque on top of your shrink sheet material. So I always recommend to use that when you're working with the shrink sheets and stamping on them. But what I did was I stamped that partridge onto the shrink sheets and then I fussy cut it out very loosely. You do not need to make this perfect. This is just to give me a smaller area to work with and a smaller area to then end up heating so it will shrink. I'm placing this on top of a Simon Says Stamp Positively Everything tool because I really like the fact that these are heat safe and also it gives me something to kind of cup that little embellishment with so that way it's not flying across my desk. I always put a clear block on top of my shrink material once it's completely shrunk and set I always like to make sure that it has something flat on top of it to keep it from curling up and not having a warped appearance. Now meanwhile, I'm gluing a piece of the pine twine on top of one of the tags that's included in this holiday limited edition kit. And then I glued one of my adorable little shrink sheet material birds on top of the tags. So I made a couple of these. One I did not color, but this second piece, the partridge image, I actually did color with some Copic markers. And so basically what I'm trying to show you is that you don't have to color these, but you can, and it provides a completely different look. So it all depends on what you're going for. I like how the colored one turned out, but at the same time, I also really liked how the one that wasn't colored turned out too. So it all depends on what you're creating, what you're going for. Either way, you've got options on how you can customize these pieces. So these made some really beautiful little tags, quick and simple and really fun with the dimension that they have with those shrink sheet embellishments, so, so cute. I finished up some really quick and simple tags then by taking some of the tags that are included in the limited edition holiday kit. I die cut some greetings from the new fancy tidings of cheer and also fancy happy holidays and glued those right down on top of those tags with some of the Christmas ephemera. You can customize these to look however you want. They're super simple to do, easy to put together, and you can make a whole bunch of these in no time at all. So this is a really good project for all those gifts that you need to make sure you have completed for the holiday season. Well, friends, there was a lot to cover in this video. A lot of projects, a lot of fun stuff from the holiday 2022 limited edition card kit from Simon's the Stamp. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas on how you can use these products to make some really fun pieces, whether it's a mixed media piece, cards, tags, you name it. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you were inspired, and I thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for watching all my videos. I can't wait to come back and share more with you all. But until then, I hope you have a fabulous day and I appreciate that you watch each of my videos. Have a great day.